Okay, so what I'm going to be doing today is setting up a yearly subscription for Saffron. And for those of you who don't know what Saffron is, that is just the project that I'm working on, or I guess the company that I'm trying to start. Well, not, not really trying to start, I am starting. And yeah, I'll link it up here so you can see it. So we already have set up a monthly fee or monthly subscription. And now I want to offer a yearly subscription as well for those that want to save some money and the benefit for us as a company is we get some money up front say that we can use for advertising. So we ideally like people signing up for yearly and we don't offer it right now. So that's something that I'm going to be fixing so that people can sign up for it. So the boxes here are the different states that a user can be in and that is what I store in my database. So I have two starting states, free and beta. And then from free, this is people who just sign up today. What they can transition to is a standard account. And the way they transition is they can either buy a monthly plan or a yearly subscription. And then same thing for beta. They can do a monthly or yearly transition to the pro. And then both of these states, they can go into canceled. And to renew their plan, they can either decide to go back to standard or back to pro. So my main takeaway is toggling between monthly and yearly subscriptions when the user purchases it. That is merely the event that triggers the transition to another state. So I already have these states and the transitions set up already because I did monthly subscriptions. The main thing that I need to add is I assume you want monthly because that's the only thing we offered at the time. And so when someone hits, for example, upgrade, I just immediately open the paddle window to charge them and it just has the monthly one basically hard coded in. And so I need to actually bring up some kind of my own UI that's like, hey, would you rather do a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription and then take them to the pay window? I wanted to see an example of what this looks like at, say, another company that's doing the same thing that I want to set up, where you can kind of toggle between yearly and monthly. So I'm over here on Framer, and what they do is they have these little cards that I can click on, and I can see the different prices, and then I can swap between bill yearly or bill monthly, and then when I'm happy with the price, I press subscribe, and it will bring up the plan for either monthly or yearly based on that. So what it looks like I need to do is come back over here and add kind of like a little toggle thing where they can switch between yearly and monthly and they can see the price before they upgrade now. I'm ready to start coding this guy. So let's create a new branch. Feature yearly sub. All right, so now I have a radio button that I can toggle between yearly and monthly pricing. And we can see the price reflected here. And so yearly is a dollar less a month. And then if I click upgrade now, that's what I need to do next. It should actually launch the yearly plan, which I haven't created yet. So let's create that. All right, so we're gonna a new plan here. I'm going to say seasoned cook is what I'm gonna call it. And the price is going to be $10 a month, which should be 120 a year. That's good, and we're going to create this plan. So now it should swap between the two plans and paddle. So if I go to monthly here and I press upgrade now, perfect. And if I click here to yearly, which is 120. So now what I need to do is on that, I think it is a modal right now. I need to add a little switch to it, or in this case, a radio button for now to get that working. And then also, there's a web hook that gets fired whenever a subscription actually successfully gets created. And so I need to make sure the IDs for that line up. So it's the next day. This is day two of building the yearly subscription. And yesterday we got a decent amount done. I got these subscriptions, at least you can trigger them from a modal now, and it gives you the option between yearly and monthly. And then you can also, well I kind of cleaned up all of the code a little bit because the recipe limits and all that stuff were kind of all over the place. So I made a nice clean object which I can reuse all over the place and also use in the app, which we're gonna have to do in a little bit. And then I also did some stuff with webhooks yesterday, but thing with webhooks is I don't know if it's 100% working yet. I'm gonna have to fake test it. I can't real test it, uh, which is kind of why Paddle a little bit sucks, but we're gonna talk more about why Paddle sucks in a second. First, let me show you what we did. 
Okay, so this is the object I was talking about, this guy right here. And all I did was I just put the different statuses that a user can be in. And then associated with those statuses, I put the information that I need to know about that particular status. So I now have all that information in a single object. And I put this kind of in my common package so I can access this on my server, on my app, on the website, everywhere, and have it all in one location, which is pretty nice. And then the other thing I was gonna show you is now when we click upgrade now up here, it's gonna bring up a little modal for me to confirm the upgrade. And now I have the yearly and monthly toggle. And then if I you know, click upgrade, and then what I was talking about, uh, what kind of sucks about Paddle is usually I wanna test this by actually you know paying with PayPal or paying with card for now, but I kind of have a problem with webhooks right now. So let me show you what's going on with that. And so I have the paddle modal that pops up on the website. And when someone finishes putting in their credit card information, they're going to hit save or upgrade or whatever. And it's going to send their request to paddle. And paddle is going to do whatever it usually does for that sort of thing. It verifies it or whatnot. And it's going to send a response back to my website. And so what I can do on my website is just update the local state. Now you'll notice I do not take this information and update our server. And the reason for that is there's a lot of reasons why this request can fail. For example, if the user's internet goes out or something, and then I could not record that information. So we don't take the response from Paddle and then send it to our server. What happens is we set up something called a webhook. So I have a route on my server like slash Paddle and that expects a specific payload to be sent from Paddle whenever someone subscribes. And so what Paddle will do is it will not only send a response to my website, it'll also send a response to my server, letting me know, hey, you have a new subscriber. And then I just take that information and upgrade the database for that particular user. Now here's where the problem is. For me to tell Paddle where to send or where my server is, I give it a URL, and I can only give it one URL as far as I can tell. So what I have it right now is I have that URL pointed at my saffronapp.com, or at least my production server. And so I can't tell Paddle to also point at my test server. So if I make a request on dev to Paddle to subscribe, what's going to happen is it's going to send the request, the webhook request, to my production server, which doesn't let me test. And so what I'm going to have to do is kind of fake the webhook um, to my server in dev. Okay, so this is the state that you'll see if you transition from being a free user to a standard subscription. And now I'm just gonna verify all this stuff still works because adding yearly shouldn't affect this. So I checked over all the code on the website and I think I'm pretty happy with it now. It doesn't look like I'm gonna have to change anything else. So now I need to just make any changes that I need to in the app. So the thing with iOS is they don't like you putting in subscriptions and stuff that is not iOS subscriptions. And because I'm using Paddle, they don't like that. So I can't actually include that in the iOS app. I just have to do this really vague message and then I hope the customer or the user knows that they need to then come to our website. The alternative is to actually implement Apple subscriptions, um, but it's really not worth it. They take 30%, which is just a huge cut, and then also the time to do it, it's kind of annoying. Um, but anyway, so I'm testing this right now. Um, I'm just gonna comment this out and just remember to, to do add this back before deploying. And now I can test this on my iOS emulator, because I don't feel like firing up the Android emulator, it's kind of crappy too. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Yes, make money. Okay, so I moved the emulator to the left side over here because it was kind of getting covered up on the right side with my face, so now you can see it. And I just added this toggle piece. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but this is React Native, and React Native actually had a little toggle built in, so that was easy to implement. And then I just added some labels above and below it. I'll probably make this prettier later, but now you can toggle between monthly and uh, yearly here. And you can also see the price down here as well. So you'll notice this is kind of the same thing that I'm doing on the website. So what I did is I created a little hook called it use free beta account info. Um, or free or beta account info. And so what this hook does is it just has some business logic inside of it, including how to build the string that I'm displaying here. 
And so I'm just using this hook in both the app and the website so I'm not duplicating the code. And so I just have this in kind of a common package that I can import in both places. And now if I click on this upgrade now while I have yearly ticked, it's now gonna take me to the Paddle website to purchase the Saffron yearly subscription. You see it's for 120 a year. If I come back, I can toggle this on to monthly. I can see $11 a month upgrade now. And it says 11 month, eleven dollars a month here. So we have that all hooked up now. I was considering creating like another page that I took the user to when they got to their recipe limit to tell them to upgrade. And that's what they would, you know, be taken to when they click on this little banner that I have that pops up here. But I changed my mind. I think what I'm gonna do is when they tap on the banner, it just takes them to the account screen which I already showed you guys with the toggle yearly, and then this is where they can just upgrade. And this is the main screen that I'm sending them to. And so the same thing would happen if they try to add a recipe. We just let them know, hey, your recipe limit is reached and you can upgrade below it. So in that case, if I'm just sending them over to the account screen and they upgrade here, I don't think there's anything else I need to add to the app. I'm basically done with yearly subscriptions. All the logic is complete. We do need to make it look pretty. So my mom's gonna create a mock-up for that and then I'm gonna style it because she's the designer and well, I'm just straight terrible at design. And then when that is complete, I'm going to push it to the prod, you know, do a little testing in prod. And then after that, you know, anyone can sign up for yearly subscriptions in Saffron and uh, yeah, start making some money.